What's good? It's your boy 2K here. For this one, I want to talk about an aspect of boxing that's been around since the inception of the sport. But today, a lot of cats seem to think that this particular aspect is a major issue, and they've titled it weight bullying. But before we get into that, I just want to say thank you for everybody who's been supporting the movement. We're expanding, and we're expanding pretty big. You know, the newest element of the movement, which is Three Kings Boxing, that's the podcast that's not even out yet, but we've got a lot of supporters. A lot of people are ready to listen to what we got to say, and I, I appreciate that, you know what I'm saying? Also, we got the website, threekingsboxing.com. It's still under construction. We're still working on it, but my man Seabone and my man Willie the Kid, as well as many others that affiliate with the movement, they made sure to put some articles on the site. For you cast to indulge in But the movement You know We're not just relegated to YouTube We're all over the place You know what I'm saying We got artists We got journalists We got cast that That are in the media uh, You know what I'm saying Of course we got The YouTube channels Colossal Boxing Talk You know uh, uh, Truth and Facts About Boxing and a, and a few others You know what I'm saying We're everywhere So it's going to be big and it's going to be big pretty soon. And I want to thank all the supporters right now and all the supporters that will be in the future. Uh, special thanks to the people that have been supporting it since the beginning when it started with my channel, Prodigy of Boxer Talk. Real talk, y'all. All right, man, let's talk about this shit, yo. See, this video really came from an outcry of fans, you know, Supposedly upset that Daniel Jacobs rehydrated allegedly to 180, 185 pounds. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? After his win over Luis Cuba Arias, right? Now, the only reason why these motherfuckers started talking is because John David Jackson came out and said he's a he's a cruiserweight. He he uh, rehydrated to X amount of pounds, and motherfuckers took that and ran. You know what I'm saying? Now, this is my problem. Why didn't you have a fucking rehydration clause before the fight, JDJ? You know what I'm saying? That's the whole reason why rehydration clauses clauses exist. So you're you don't feel like you're at a disadvantage when you get in the fight when your opponent rehydrates 10, 15, 20 pounds. You put a fucking rehydration clause and it pretty much limits them to only rehydrating at that particular weight. That's why it's there. So why didn't you seek it? Nobody talked about how you guys tried to negotiate a rehydration clause, right, pre uh, prior to the fight. A lot of my inside sources I didn't say anything about a rehydration clause ever being negotiated. You know what I'm saying? Nor did you mention trying to negotiate a rehydration clause in your rant and stating that, you know, the only reason why Cuba really lost Besides the fact that this nigga had a fucking blister on his foot. You know what I'm saying? And the dude used like a hell of a lot of raps just for a blister that he said he got in the second round of the fight. But anyway, whatever. Besides that, right? Y'all are saying he lost because he Daniel Jacobs was a cruiserweight. But you already knew Daniel Jacobs can fucking rehydrate. Right? You already knew he can rehydrate at a higher weight than what he's at at middleweight. Because he did it the fight before against Gennady Golovkin, right? So, Abel Sanchez came out, right, and said, Oh, Daniel Jacobs weighed 182 pounds, but it won't matter, right? Daniel Jacobs came out later and said, No, that's false, but I did rehydrate 15 pounds. I came in at 175. He admitted to rehydrating higher. Basically into a whole nother fucking weight class Skipping super middleweight Going into light heavyweight He admitted that he does that So JDJ and Luis Cuba Arias And all your other You know um, your The rest of your management team Why the fuck didn't y'all take note of that And say yo We know this motherfucker rehydrates We need a rehydration clause Why didn't you do that I don't want to hear no bullshit excuses You lost You know what I'm saying Now I will admit myself when I first watched the fucking fight, the first thing that I noticed was that Daniel Jacobs was much bigger than Louis Cuba Arias. 
Arias look like a little motherfucking kid in there, dog. You know what I'm saying? Look like Daniel Jacobs could have sunned this nigga. You know what I mean? But again, that's their fault. They should have taken the provisions, right, that are readily available. I mean, you just fucking asked for it during negotiations and said, hey, we want a rehydration clause, right? So let's get past that. What I really want niggas to understand is this. Rehydration, rehydrating anyway, to a higher weight than what you are, is something that's been around boxing since forever. It's not even just in pro boxing, it's in amateur boxing as well. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, there's another principle to what you guys would title weight bullying, right? And that's guys that are fighting in weight classes that are like 20, 30 pounds less than what they walk around at. That's the same concept. It's just a different principle, right? It's kind of the reverse. They're losing weight to get down to a weight. Whereas rehydration on fight night, they're rehydrating up to a certain weight, right? But it's the same concept. And the reason why I say that is because if you weigh 185 pounds, right? Cruiserweight division. But you're moving down to 154 <laughs> and 147, right? Well, what happens is you're able to uh, uh, bully your opponents in the ring because you're a mu- you're normally a much bigger guy, right? You can take the power of a smaller guy who doesn't walk around at 185, who may walk around realistically 160 if he's fighting at 147, right? Maybe 170, maybe 170 if he's fighting at 154, right? You could take those shots better because you're naturally a bigger guy, okay? You can impose your will on that smaller fighter because you're naturally a bigger guy. Case in point, Nonito Donaire. Motherfucker had been weight bullying ever since he took Vic Darchinian's undefeated record and gave him his first loss at 112 pounds. Nonito Donaire was too big for 112. You know what I'm saying? So he did it for the large part of his career. And that's actually how Nonito Donaire had a lot of success. Another case in point, Canelo. We all know Canelo walks around at a, as a cruiserweight. That's already came out. But he gets down to 154. He's fighting a 160 now. But when he was at 154, he was still walking around 180, 185. You see what I'm saying? Another guy, Adrian Broner. Adrian Broner was walking around 160 when he was fighting at 135. You see what I'm saying, people? So that shit has been around and a lot of other fighters have done it. I could give you a personal example. When I went back to amateur boxing at the age of 23 years old, right? I went to a uh, a particular gym in my area and I talked to my trainer. I still remember his name. His name was Sam. And we're talking and shit. You know, he's seeing what I got. Let me spar a little bit. He's like, all right, man, you know what I'm saying? I like you, you know what I'm saying? We're going to work with this, we're going to work with that. Uh, how much do you weigh? And at that time... I was just starting the the weight regimen that I pretty much mastered today, right? Uh, I had gained like 30 pounds of muscle and shit that year. So I weighed about 185, literally, at that time. And my trainer was like, all right, cool, man. I, I want you to fight at 152. 152. And the amateurs is welterweight. <laughs> he told me that. So what is that? What is that? How many? Was that 23 pounds? 33 pounds? Now, I was muscle. I wasn't water weight. You know what I'm saying? It was muscle. It wasn't fat. It was muscle. And he told me, "All right, man, we want you to we want you to fight at 152." And the reason why he did that is because me as a fighter, I had a lot of power. I'll beat your motherfucking body up, dog, and you gonna quit. That's how I fought. And he wanted me to impose that will on smaller fighters. That's why he wanted me to fight at that low of a weight. You know what I'm saying? So, exactly what Canelo does as a professional, that's what Sam tried to get me to do as an amateur. And there's plenty of other cases, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, Sean Porter. You know what I'm saying? He's another guy that does this. Sean Porter walks around 170. You know what I'm saying? 165. So, it is what it is, but I can even give you examples off the top, you know what I'm saying, of, of uh, other fighters who have rehydrated, 
right? And the funny thing is, when we're comparing to Daniel Jacobs' situation with Arias, nobody really said anything about this. It's either A, you didn't know, or B, you just don't like Daniel Jacobs. You know what I'm saying? So, off top. Fernando Montiel versus fucking uh, Nonito Donaire in 2011. I think that fight was for two titles, the WBC and the WBO, right? Now, they were supposed to fight at 118 pounds. Fucking Fernando Montiel, and this is kind of shocking because I just mentioned Nonito Donaire was actually the weight bully, right? Fernando Montiel rehydrated on fight night from 118 to 134. That's 16 pounds. And he weighed eight pounds more than Donaire did. Donaire only weighed 126. Nobody said nothing about that. Nobody bitched and moaned and complained about that. Probably because you don't watch the little guys. Same motherfuckers that bitching and moaning are really casuals at heart. Don't know shit about boxing. You know what I'm saying? They only watch the main event. Shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Canelo versus Austin Trout. You know what I'm saying? I think both men rehydrated 15 plus pounds. If my memory serves me correctly, Trout weighed in at 171. Canelo weighed in at 172, I believe. And I just looked at this shit before I did the video. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm trying to remember it, trying to do this shit without taking notes. Canelo weighed in at 172, I believe, right? So, and I think at weigh-in, they both weighed in at 153. So if you do the math, Trout ballooned up 18 pounds. Canelo ballooned up 19 pounds. Nobody bitched and moaned and complained about that. That's a situation where two fighters ballooned up. You know what I'm saying? Manny Pacquiao versus David Diaz. You know what I'm saying? Both men rehydrated 12 plus pounds. Fucking David Diaz weighed 148 pounds. Manny Pacquiao weighed 147 you know what I'm saying? That fight was at lightweight. Both men came in at 135. That's what I'm talking about, man. You know what I'm saying? And don't, don't, oh shit, I, let me mention this. Don't. I can't forget about this. The motherfuckers that have rehydrated against Floyd Mayweather. You know what I'm saying? Diego Corrales. That fight was at 130 pounds. Diego Corrales moved from 130 to 146. 16 pounds, right? Nine and a half pounds more than Floyd Mayweather. Marcos Maidana in the first fight, he moved from 146 to 160 fucking five. 19 pounds. And he weighed a whopping 17 pounds more than Floyd Mayweather. Now I know for a fact why y'all motherfuckers didn't bitch moan and complain about that because you wanted to see Floyd Mayweather lose. The Diego Corrales situation, y'all didn't watch boxing back then. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm talking to the casuals, of course. Y'all didn't watch boxing back then, so you, you probably didn't know that. You know what I'm saying? But you can, everything I'm saying, you can research it. That's the thing about the prodigy. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to give you the facts. Everything I say, you can go and research it and you're going to find exactly what I'm telling you. You know what I'm saying? But I know you motherfuckers didn't bitch, moan, and complain about Marcos Maidana weighing 17 pounds more than Floyd Mayweather for a fucking welterweight fight. Because you wanted to see him lose. Most recently, David Lemieux rehydrated uh, 15 plus pounds more than Curtis Stevens. Nobody bitch, moaned, and complained about that. Come on, man. Get the fuck out of here, man. Even Sugar Ray Robinson, we can go back in time. Sugar Ray Robinson, you know what I'm saying, was known to be bigger than his opponents on fight night. You know what I'm saying? That's why he had no problems moving from lightweight to middleweight in a three-year span. I think from 1940, yeah, 1940, he started at, at lightweight. And then by 1943, he was at middleweight. And I think his first middleweight fight was his loss to Jake LaMotta. That's probably why he fucking lost. You know what I'm saying? But of course, you know, in between those, uh, that time, those that three-year span, of course he campaigned at welterweight, junior middleweight. But my point is, he had no problem moving from lightweight to middleweight in three years. We don't see that shit today. We don't see that shit today, people. That tells you he was naturally a bigger motherfucker. Right? So, cut this shit out, man. 
weight bullying, what y'all call it, I don't call it weight bullying. I call it an aspect of boxing. All right. From the amateurs, when we're telling cats, hey, we want you to, you weigh this much, we want you to get down to this weight, to the professionals where a lot of motherfuckers do that, right? To niggas rehydrating 15 pounds fight night. It's a part of boxing. You as the fighter have to adjust to that and do what you need to do to win, or you as the fighter should be seeking a rehydration clause. You and your team should be seeking that. So I don't want to hear any of this weight bully bullshit. It's a part of boxing. YouTube, do what you do in the comment section. Let me know what you think about this topic. But be real. This is real talk for real fans. One.